Hi, good morning everyone. Uh, I am Kapil Tiwadi. So today I will be presenting about the comparison of local and the optimal PV inverter control approaches sure. for design for preventing over voltage, especially in PV reach low voltage network. So my research advisors are Dr. Tunkowski, Hansen, and Dr. Forney, who is not uh, Dr. Hansen is not here today. So I also like to thank. Uh, sure. I, I'm sure because he's in the office, right? He sent me an email by the way this morning. So. He replies to your email. <laughs> yeah. So I would also like to thank Fernando and uh, Rupak who helped me a lot in my research. So uh, let me get started with uh, my research content. Um, so today I'll begin with the. Is it working? It's not. So I'll start with the background on why over voltage occurs in a PV reads uh, low voltage distribution network to give you some motivations on why we are doing this research. And I'll present some latest review on different local PV inverter control approaches um, that are uh, uh, available in the literature. I'll, I'll uh, provide some objectives of this research and contributions, um, and in-depth uh, explanations of how those local uh, inverter control uh, approach works uh, uh, to prevent the overvolt. So basically those red ones are were implemented by the RUPAC and the new ones, Active Reactive Power Group and Optimal Inverter Dispatch. Uh, I implemented them, so I will go in depth how this controller works. Um, then I'll provide the simulation benchmark and setup that I use for the simulation with the result and analysis, especially focusing on voltage profile and energy curtailment because those two are the most important uh, parameters of, uh, for the technical comparison. And I'll finally, I will end the presentation with conclusions and future directions of this research. So, what we are saying is that there is a rise of PV installations, not only in the U.S., but also in the world. To give you an idea that there is a current 58.3 gigawatt of installation, PV installation in the U.S., which is expected to double by uh, 2023, and there are many factors uh, affecting these. So, from the state uh, portfolio standards and uh, um, like the incentives, all those stuff, so PV installations are rising. and. Uh, these installations are expected to be present at the distribution level. Um, the major sale, about the 50 to 60 percent of these PV installations will be expected at distribution level. By distribution level, I mean that they operate at a low voltage level compared to the transmission and subtransmission level by 2020. And when we have a very high uh, generation instead of the uh, consumption, it can cause reverse power flow. So power can flow backward, and that can cause over voltage. Uh, in the distribution network. That actually happens uh, when there is a high generation, then consumption during high irradiance and low load period. So that can raise distribution system voltage. And one of the disadvantages of this is it can limit the feeder capacity. By feeder capacity, I mean how much PV that a particular distribution system can host. It limits that. Uh, it limits the amount of PV installation that you can install in a distribution. To give you an idea, if this is a distribution network, you can see that if there is no PV, that means there is no reverse power flow. So down the feeder, the voltage is expected to drop down, right? But when there is a high uh, PV installation on the distribution feeder, the voltage can go up when there is a PV. So we can see that the over voltage raising in the low voltage feeder. The typical relation for over voltage with respect to the amount of power that you inject at a particular node is given by this relation. So where P is the active power, net active power injected, and Q is the net reactive power injected, R and X are the distribution parameters, and B is just the voltage. So the amount of raise is directly proportional to the amount of power that you inject uh, in this way. So I went through some of the literature and found that if there is an over voltage, a typical way is to shut down the inverter. For example, according to the IEEE 1547 2003 standard, if the work, um, voltage goes above 1.1 PU, the inverter typically shuts up, and there is a five minute dis disconnection time once it turns off. So that means you cannot connect on the side. Um, another approach I saw is a group based active power curtailment approach, which is proposed in five and six. So, by the, what I mean uh, by group based active power curtailment is you curtail based on your voltage deviation from some critical value that you can, do not curtail whole, but you, you can curtail gradually so, so that you don't have to you know, remain disconnected for five minutes and do the uh, you know, sudden curtail. It doesn't, but it doesn't use reactive power. That means we can expect there will be high energy. 
Another approach is local and adaptive board water control. Board water control is uh, popular in terms it uses a reactive power uh, to uh, lower the voltage. So in this paper seven, they propose an adaptive board water control that can you know, mitigate some of the disadvantages of those uh, board water control approaches. But also it only uses reactive power control, which is sufficient to um, prevent our voltage only at a certain level of uh, PV penetration. But if you go very high level of PV penetration, only reactive power may not be sufficient to control the overall. So another approach would be a combined active and reactive power control. So in that part, what they do is that they first do reactive power absorption to control the over voltage, and if it is not sufficient, then only they do the active power. That way, we will minimize the amount of energy needed to prevent the over voltage, and we can save money. Uh, but still, they are all local controls. By local controls, what I mean is that they use only the local information. For example, the voltage at the point of connections, current, those information. Um, the another approach is active reactive power management. It uses sort of limited communication to issue a signal to all the PV inverters that over voltage has occurred in the system and they will coordinately absorb the reactive power and also curtail active power in order to provide some voltage support. That has a benefit of um, minimizing total energy curtailment, which we will see in the regional section later on. Um, the best approach is to do an optimal PV inverter dispatch. By optimal PV inverter dispatch, it finds the exact amount of curtailment necessary for each PV inverters so that we would minimize the overall total energy curtailment. It's sort of a centralized approach and assumes that we have a very high sophisticated amount of communication between the central processing unit and all those individual smart PV inverters. So it is basically the optimal solution of, uh, of, the, uh, of this, of this uh, inverter control approach. So if we try to summarize what those controls are, then we can summarize in three uh, generations. So first generation, it uses local control, but uh, so the active power curtailment is one of the approach, and reactive power control, and dynamic wall power control. So these are, these are the local control, that is only the local information. But the parameters that they use are fixed in the local control. So if you move to the second generation, they are adaptive local control. That means some of the parameters, like the group parameters, they can be updated in real time or based on some optimization techniques, and that will cover up the second generation. The third generation, it uses a high, you know, sophisticated communication infrastructure. So one is a centralized control and distributed control. Both uses uh, some optimization techniques to reach to the global optimal solution. So centralized uh, distributed is uh, it's like they can compute the inverter dispatch at the local level, but it still um, it uses communication infrastructure to gain the data from other inverters. So the centralized approach, they perform computation only at central node and you know, uh, dispatch the, uh, or provide these uh, dispatch signals to all the PV inverters from a single point. Um, so the, my research objective in this uh, presentation is to provide you a technical performance comparison of different local PV inverter control approach, especially comparing to their uh, optimal performance, which can assist us in deciding what are the better inverter control technologies or schemes uh, based on our different objectives. Some might want uh, reduced energy curtailment, some might want to minimize communications. So based on different objectives, what type of uh, inverter control approach would be uh, beneficial for a particular distribution there. So the contributions in this part uh, was to, so what we did in this part is we developed a framework that if we put any PV inverter control approaches, we can see what would be their performance in terms of the, you know, what how far are we uh, from the optimal performance of those inverters? <coughs> so we are trying to compare uh, four different uh, local inverter control approaches. One is the over voltage protection, which is just to start off the inverter once there is an over voltage. Another one is a group based active power curtailment. A third one is active reactive power group. And the fourth one is active reactive power management. I will go through in detail how this controller works. The first one is the group-based active power curtailment. So in the group-based active power curtailment, what we do is we do not curtail until the critical voltage. So once the voltage reaches the critical voltage, which is close to the threshold voltage, then we start to curtail the active power. The way we curtail the active power is in one paper it's proposed linearly, in another one it's proposed quadratically. So, so if the voltage goes high, then there is an increment in the curtailment. But one thing interesting to note is that the marginal curtailment 
increases with increase in voltage in QDAPC. Marginal curtailment, what do I mean by that is what is the amount of curtailment needed for unit increase in the voltage. So if you can see that in quadratic ones, so it does higher curtailment in the higher voltage, but it does lower curtailment at lower voltage. This has a special benefit in terms of reducing the energy. So to give you the values of very critical and refresh, what we use ANSI standard, American National Standard. So it says that it has a three ranges of voltage standard, range A, range C, and DC operational range. So range A is just a norm, uh, normal operation. So and range B is the critical range. So we are using 1.042 per unit as a uh, very critical and 1.058 as a threshold one. So that is the operating zone for the inverter control of those that we have. Um, another one is the active and reactive power group. So in the previous one, we are using the group only on the active power curtailment, but in this part, it uses the benefit of reactive power absorption because if we look, uh, if you remember the relation for the uh, over voltage, how much voltage deviation del V, it is also related to the reactive power. So we start first with the reactive power absorption. In this part, the maximum active power will be injected by the beam inverter. So we start from V key to V critical. V key is the point from where the reactive power absorption starts. So we are setting this to the transformer tap point for now, which is 1.02 per unit. So until this V critical, we will do reactive power absorption linearly. And then after this, we'll fix that Q at a Q max and do the active power. Because the Q max is also limited by the inverter capacity and the maximum power factor allowed. So another one is active reactive power management ARPM. So it uses, uh, as I said before, it uses limited communication for uh, coordinating those uh, reactive power absorption and active power curtailment. Basically, once there is an over voltage, uh, a, uh, a signal will be issued to every PV inverter, and then they will start first the local reactive power absorption. And if that local reactive power absorption is not sufficient enough to cope with over voltage, then it moves to the active power curtailment. Every house will coordinate the move to the active power curtailment, and once the over voltage issue is resolved, then they try to restore those active and reactive power set points to the normal operation. Uh, the one that I implemented in this research is the optimal inverter dispatch or centralized control. So as I said before, it uses a communication infrastructure. So that is a physical layer. Those are the houses and distribution figure, transformer. Uh, and these are the uh, load points, every load point. So we are assuming that we can communicate with these PV inverters, we can send and receive any uh, information, load data, irradiance data, every one of those informations at this central, uh, at this central point. So if we have information about the load and the generation at each node, we can find out what would be the optimal dispatch for each of these two inverters, and we can send that information and do it in the real time. So basically, this block has access to the load and generation data and performs a single optimization and sends out all those optimal sets. And, the, and these points, they receive those updates and then try to uh, produce the amount of power that uh, is being sent as a set point. Like a set point. To give you a mathematical overview, so this is the optimization formulation that I use. The first part is just saying that, hey, just minimize the sum of curtailment from all of the houses. Right? So we have a dual house, it will try to minimize sum of the curtailment from all of the houses. So we have to meet some powerful equations that at, its, at each node, the power input should be equal to the power output. So we are using linearized version of the power flow equation in this part. Um, another one is the power factor limit. So it says that you cannot exceed certain uh, power factor. Like for example, if there's 0 0.9 power factor, you cannot go below 0 0.9 power. Factor. So it, it has a constraint on that. Another one is the voltage bounds. So voltage should be limited within the minimum and maximum bounds. And active power dispatch, it cannot go below zero. So the inverter power should be between PI and PPT. So PI and PPT is the maximum solar power available, so should be using that. And if you remember the nodes, there are some nodes where PV are not connected. So those are called as utility nodes. At those nodes, no power should be absorbed or generated. So that's And the power should be within the inverter capacity. If you perform these optimizations, it will give you the optimal set. Uh, so the benchmark and setup that I use in this one is a 12 house benchmark system. So the transformer capacity is 75 kg. Each house is assumed to have a solar panel of 8.5 kilowatt installed. Irradiance and low data are used from the Chicago area. So we performed the simulation for a day, for June 22, which is a very high irradiance day for that year. 
and optimization is solved using CVX packets and MATLAB for centralizing. Um, so this is a typical load profile for one house, and this is a MPPT power profile for that particular day. Unique load profile were generated for each of the houses, so we're not using the same load for each, uh, each of the house. So to generate those unique load profile, queuing load modeling was used, and this was a work from Fernando, and uh, which uh, uses a aggregated load profile from one of the Chicago theater. And we are using the irradiance from the same region as well, and for the same year. So this is the voltage profile for different inverter control uploads. So this is without any controller, so you can see that with if there is no controller, the voltage can go up to 1.09 per unit. So the limit for the threshold voltage is 1.05. So we want to keep the voltage below this limit, right? So if there is no controller, we can see the voltage can go up to 1.058 per unit. Um, for, and every control methods are um, can maintain the over voltage below this 1.058 except for the ARPM because uh, the ARPM, which is active reactive power management, it it kind of controls only if there is an overvoltage. So it will first have to sense whether there is overvoltage or not, and it takes a certain time to you know control back the voltage below one point zero five eight. And that's why we have seen some sort of overvoltage in the case of the ARPM one. OID approach, on the other hand, is the optimization based approach. That's why it will do the exact amount of curtailment necessary. So the voltage will be exactly at the threshold, at the hard limit, so that it has to do uh, so that it can do the minimum curtailment. Other controllers, they can maintain voltage below 1.058, and these are the violin plots that just clusters the voltage magnitudes um, based on the frequency of the operands. So it's, these are combined uh, voltage magnitudes, data points from all of the houses. So the left-hand side is only for controlling the active power, and the right-hand side is control, for controlling both active and reactive power. The, if we look at the energy grid helmet, what we are seeing is if you turn off the inverter once there is an over voltage, there will be high amount of energy curtailment, around 25% of the available energy. But if you implement the uh, group-based active power curtailment, you can go up to 14.6%, saying that quadratic behavior has more uh, better performance than linear one. As we uh, explained uh, before, that the marginal curtailment necessary increases with increase in the voltage. That means it tries to do more curtailment near threshold. And uh, if you look at the optimal performance, we can do better up to 10% if we can, you know, effectively control all of the inverters. But if we control both active and reactive power, we can go up to 0.8%, right? And these are the local approaches that uses uh, the active and reactive power both. And these are interesting because even if they are local control, they can do better than this optimal uh, strategy which uses only the active. So if we can use both active and reactive power, you can reduce your curtailment significantly. So the conclusions are, uh, if non-immunity power factor is prohibited, that means if we are not allowed to use any reactive power, then use quadratic two based active power curtailment. Because we are saying that uh, this LDAPC, this is a linear group and this is quadratic group, so quadratic group can reduce the curtailment very much. So if you are not allowed to use any uh, reactive power, then use quadratic group based active power curtailment. But if you are allowed, then you can use both active and reactive power to minimize the curtailment. So the local inverter control can reduce curtailment significantly when reactive power control is allowed. And um, based on your needs, the communication necessity and the possibility of voltage utterance above threshold value in ARPM, because in ARPM, which is also local control, but uses uh, limited communication. Uh, it can reduce the curtailment by 1.5% than this active and reactive power group, but it uses communication. And also, it has a possibility that there, will, there may be occurrence of short term over voltage. So it's hard to justify the use, it may be hard to justify the use of ARPM against the ARD control schemes. So in future, we are trying to run the simulations for a year to get more insight on different seasonal variations um, of, the, uh, of the solar panel output and also the load pattern to see if these conclusions really uh, are true. Thank you very much. If you have any questions.